We'll just bring this a little bit down and <laughs> even it, even it out, even keel here. Been doing some packing up, and I, I open up a drawer, and there's like all these rolled up paper tubes, and I'm thinking, how did that happen? <laughs> Twenty and a half years, and it's my turn. This is pretty extraordinary. I actually love farewell speeches. Maybe not giving them, but I love watching them. There's something about moments of finality. These are our political epitaphs of a sort, right? And they can be very profound, funny, or insightful. Also can be none of those things. <laughs> some are reflective. Some are just petty knife twists at the, on the way out. But all of them shine a light on the underpinning character and motivation of the person speaking, whether they know it or not. I've heard hundreds over the years, and that's not a hard number to say because we had 50 this last two days, right? But hundreds over the years of different generations of uh, lawmakers facing this moment. So far for me to lecture those who remain in this place on things on which I've had the opportunity to focus, yet did not in favor of other priorities. You're not going to hear a lot of that. It falls to those here remaining to chart the course for policies and priorities on my and the rest of the public's behalf, even if I'm certainly still providing some friendly nudging along the way. Nor do I enter this moment with any great bitterness. Although I have concerns, obviously, I do have a concern with how lazily people can now engage without accountability in this space, while the public figure remains accountable for everything. It's worrying to me that most of us have to be inauthentic in what we say we believe versus what we actually believe due to being held captive to the extreme voices that brook no compromise. And the new majority will soon discover the difficulty of translating idealism of a loyal opposition into broad public policies and governance. It's a challenge we face in this time, for sure. Perhaps we can recapture ourselves from this institutional fragility with longer service, but only if decisions are made individually by each member to pursue cohesive governance. I want each member to strive to know their worth and value in their voice, and not bow to those types that would exercise power through division or machinations. You're an equal member, an equal representation of your district to the others in this chamber. Become inconvenient at times. Overall, one of my greatest misgivings, I guess, is the loss of sentimentality itself, even what these moments represent. The acknowledgement of seasons of life and service, chapters closing and opening. Our attention spans are shorter, our communication more trite and thin, and our relationships more fragile and inauthentic. We lose a sense of the place, its traditions, what this opportunity represents, and the burdens that it should all convict us all with. I remember being a kid staffer, literal kid staffer, I started at 19, and looking over at the gaggle in the lobby with a furtive glance, curious about how any work could possibly get done in this chaos. Now I realize that the chamber itself is the embodiment of exchange and relationship. Also a representation of our civic life in all of its various shades of health and illness. We are, in all of our strengths and faults, a mirror image of the culture we represent. So how are we doing, do you think? We are in a people business, and there's so many I could just pull out a staff directory and read off alphabetically particularly those who stood by me in those early uncertain and vulnerable years as a young staffer. I've caught up with several of you already in the last few days and will continue to strive to do so with more in the days to come. Most of the folks that were here in this institution back in 2003, 4, 5 and are still here meet the definition I just described and I appreciate you all. Dave Robertson took a chance on a 19 year old kid I didn't even know what a precinct was when we first talked. <laughs> but I learned fast, because we were in all of them doing doors. And we beat an incumbent by a little over 500 votes. And he didn't give me a letter of recommendation or a pat on the back. He gave me a job, something you don't see happen that often anymore, that, that opportunity for the campaign person to become the incumbency person. He kept his word. Obviously, I was older and more mature by then. I'd reached my 20th year, and so I was ready to go. I had to have been the youngest full-time uh, staffer in the house at the time. 
In those early couple of years, I fired myself over and over through limiting beliefs, imposter syndrome. I mean, you're just this kid from a small town, grew up in a Habitat house. I was, you know, less than a year away from pushing carts at a retail store. Dave himself, my first coworker, Randy Thompson, and this is where the alphabetical would start. Many, many people came alongside me in those early years and let me see some of their vulnerability and fragility and say, you're gonna be just fine. I remember a conversation with Dave we had in his, his office where he talked me out of me giving him the choice to let me go. And I found my footing and it worked out. I moved over to the Senate side and Roger Kahn is somebody that I'll always have tremendous uh, appreciation for because he stood by me during my lowest personal moment. And I'm grateful for him. He didn't have to do that. And he showed me about people over politics, the, new, the nuance of sur surgical messaging that really represented a district that had both urban and rural representation within it. So I was now the youngest Senate chief of staff and still finding my footing. And Darren Ackerman stood by me as a model chief of staff and somebody that I will always treasure, the fact he just took the time with the new kid in the room and also how he modeled that leadership, and I'm so glad he's still contributing to our institutions here. I hired Becky Britton, and she became the heart of our staff team during, in those years, and her ability to handle logistics was magical, and I appreciated that time with her. And we had a treasured district director named Bill Adams, who was a former chief of police, mayor, had all these things at his back, I remember the first early days, he called me chief. And just showing that acknowledgement and that, and that trust and hope gave me some confidence. He's gone now and I miss him. I was wearing a tie he gifted me in what is now my mayoral portrait at City Hall. And I can say starting young, there, are, there is that downside because when you start that young, you, you lose people. And I had a list I was putting together. It could be 10, 10 or more people just top of the head. We lost Susan Martin just a few days ago, a staff mentor to me back 20 years ago. And John Farley, my dear friend, coworker. Some of them were sudden. But also in that season during the Senate, Eric Dean showed to me just how you do constituent work. He was our constituent director. I love that he's still serving and contributing to the House, but there was nobody better at that work and nobody that was more of an advocate at that time. So there were different seasons. I entered a new season of service with Joel Johnson, representative in this chamber, true public servant, and worthy of the honorable in a way few are. My coworker Aaron Bayless, ever the professional, quietly uh, guiding and advising and now contributing much to the other chamber. I wanna say, without naming them, thank you to the four or to five people I could think of that looked in on me during times of vulnerability, during transitions. We forget Turbo must bind our staff as well. So I had 14 years on staff. I only had three employers. That's pretty good. And I got to choose it and determine it myself. That's even better. But there are those people that, you know, you have all these folks in this town, particularly as you get elected to, whatever you need, anything I can do. It's such a lazy phrase. How much does that actually happen? Very, very rarely. But there are four to five people, and I know they know who they are, who just did that phone call right about this time of year or after Christmas. Hey, have you landed? Have you found something? I'm just thinking about you, your name came up. I had in all cases, but they took the time to look in on me. And I hope that we can all do the same for those that we care about. Just remember who's actually there when you're vulnerable. Another season of service. I've been in elected service in my hometown now nine years, and it was time to go and try to come here myself. Met a guy named Henry Wolf, better known as the Door Wolf. And we were doing doors the February of the off year, just doing things that were crazy things, under the radar, getting together every week. Henry is a dynamo, and I'm grateful for our friendship and everything he's accomplished and the marvelous uh, steps he's taken in his life since 2015. As I've gotten into office here, had some other team members, most recently, Alex Dempsey, it's been great to get to know you these recent months, and thanks for that marvelous experience to your home state, the Upper Peninsula. 
It was a great, great, great time, treasured, and to be repeated. Jacob Duverville's brought his highly energetic nature, and he's been ready to serve. Craig Peterson was a fantastic staffer, calm, the rock, I called him. One of the best you'll find, just that steady, head-down worker. We had Maddie Schultz, too, great intern, done some wonderful things to help with grassroots in rural Saginaw and continue that advocacy in our office. Our staff writer, Christy Dorer, it's hard with me because I'm very precise on communications, but she got it. She got my voice, and I love her writing style. She's one of the best in the business, superb writer. And we have these classic folks, John Whetstone, John Perry, Jeff Barrett, Mike Quillen, and these professionals that have been around all that time. True talent. There's others I can mention too, Ralph Phoebe. This is just a ton of people. I don't want to go down that road. There's, just a, there's that alphabetical directory again. I had Gary Rounded on, but you kind of heard my earlier speech, so I'll just say voice of the house. And I'm grateful for the fact that uh, he was that guiding star this whole time. Yusuf Rabi has been a wonderful partner, and it's a lesson in first impressions because uh, I judged by decibel level the first time. <laughs> I'm like, this is the guy that I've got to have as my counterpart here, but we get along pretty well. I mean, I mean, gosh, he's wearing my vest for crying out loud. I mean, that's, that's got to be good, right? And he looks great in it. It looks better than I do in it. But you and Jelani have been a marvelous uh, partner for, for us, and I think that the fact that we were able to look at institution first and then uh, go from there has been tremendous, and I appreciate, appreciate you both so much. I appreciate our sergeants team, former Chief Dixon, Chief John Fawn, all the sergeants that have kept us safe and secure. It's a burden that's placed between us on, on a mutual responsibility for the order and safety of the floor. Your work is so valued. Thank you. The partnership's been tremendous, much appreciated. And our Rostrum team, these nice, quiet people behind the monitors that you see, your work is appreciated by all of us. Even as we hurried to head back to our districts at the close of session, you're still here hours later. Just know that you're recognized and we see you. I wanted to mention uh, a good friend, Josh Atkinson, too, a carpool buddy of mine, friends since high school. He's going to be here today. But he represents another band of people that maybe I hope you're thinking about, too, those friendships you want to invest in more. And I regret I, don't, I haven't done more already. So think about guys like Josh and women that are in your life. Who are you not investing in? I appreciate you, Josh. You're the same guy that you were in high school, and that's actually a good thing in your case. Mark Tisdell was my assigned mentee today. And he is a marvelous, fully formed human being. And that's not something that I say about a lot of people in this town. You've created some terrific memories. You've built authentic relationships and connections, including a, a marvelous treasured memory just yesterday. Thank you, Mark. Representative Hashtag Love Lasting. I knew her before the house. And whether it was cleaning up the streets together we're getting tens of thousands of adults opportunities for post-secondary pursuits. You're stuck with me for the duration, if you'll have me. Love you. Tim Sneller. I will always treasure having served with one of my original mentors and friends. You were in another office to the, in the same county. You could have been a freeze out. We'd knocked off an incumbent, you know, you had every reason. You were welcoming and warm and I learned a lot from you. Seeing you at new member orientation was a memory that I will always cherish, our initial hello. It's been a long time. And I love that this tradition that we started of bipartisan socials is continuing, and I'm assured by new co-chairs O'Neill and Tisdale that we're now emeritus members for life. Let's carpool to one of those soon. Now, there's another member that I've got to mention just briefly. If you told me, of all people, that I'd be called Babe Daily by a colleague, and you further told me that the person calling me that would be a man, I wouldn't know what to think about that. You're a marvelous person, Joe, and your heart and your story has inspired more people than you know. Sue Aller, a small gesture, just offering your cabin up north to my family, the first trip that my children and I we're able to take with my wife and just make sure we could do this whole going on a trip thing with two special needs kids. You gave us that little laboratory to have that experience.
Thank you for that. Rodney, you're my friend. I appreciate that conversation we had about dad, some very difficult stuff. Thank you. I want to mention here, too, all those who have been angels in my family's life as dad's dealt with this challenge and we work through it together. I really do feel that extended family. Rep Paquette, our weeks-long study of Ecclesiastes will hang with me. Rep Pepper, Ecclesi Ecclesiastes. <laughs> we were able to study, and when you appreciate the meaninglessness of most things under the sun or everything under the sun, you think more on the things of God, it just changes you. And you're a wonderful brother in faith, and I appreciate you. Mr. Speaker, I'm not done yet. I'm talking about you now. Thank you for your trust and confidence. I've long believed that insecurity is the biggest killer for leaders because it leads to all the bad character traits of control and command, manipulation. You took a different path, not because it was strategically more correct. It's just who you are. And I thank you for empowering and allowing for multiplication across the membership of this body. And I'll always treasure that conversation at the Hotton now in Sturgis. The last one. Not bad for a couple kids from rural Michigan. There's so many names. You see how hard this is? <laughs> I'm going to start dodging direct eye contact now because I'm leaving so many out and I have to stop that part. I want my parents, Mike and Barbara, I continue to dedicate my service to them. If we could see this place through their eyes, like they did when they came for their first visit to this place, just last week, if we could see this place through their eyes, it would heal our land. Dear friends Schaefer Fox and Mike Kovitz, Schaefer's here with us tonight. Our movie nights together over the years, again, oasis of normalcy. My dearest friend, Chris, Evel Chris Evelis, somebody who gets it, who understands. He just wrapped up over 13 years of service, including as my successor for, as mayor of Owasso for three terms to talk with him throughout and have that ability to connect with somebody who gets it in a place of complete safety. Our text exchanges in moments of vulnerability and exasperation. You know, the Hollywood had famous friendships between horror icons Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. And I'm a classic movie guy. And there's a quote from Christopher Lee about Peter Cushing. And he says, at some point in your lives, every one of you will notice you have in your life one person, one friend whom you love and care for very much. That person is so close to you that you're able to share some things only with them. For example, you call that friend and from the very first maniacal laugh or some other joke, you will know who is at the other end of that line. I have that friend in Chris and I'm grateful every single day and happy he's away right now enjoying a well-deserved vacation. Rachel Hookstra, in this place and from this time in my career, I will miss you the most. From before the very first day, right on through the end, I would not be where I am without you. Hardest challenge for a staff becoming a member is to delegate, because you've done all the jobs yourself. You brought your knowledge and honed my instincts, patiently working through strategy, yet professional and completely trustworthy and loyal even when you disagreed. The amount of multiplication and, and output your presence and skill afforded me in my furtive mind cannot be quantified. I would not have been able to get out of my own way, and I wouldn't have gained the scale of vision required to serve in leadership absent your wise and patient counsel and earnest correction. It's a point of extreme pride for me that your excellence has been able to benefit everyone in this chamber through your role in delivering effective management of the floor. You deserve only the best and are forever family to Lydia and me. Thank you. I want to say thank you to Rural in Michigan for offering me the opportunity to serve with no particular background, no family name, just that chance, that trust. I want to thank my hometown of Owasso, which has been put through a combined 15 years of elected office over five elections. And they've stood with me every time. As I get ready to close this speech out, 
I want to share some, a couple of unique things about my district that I think are pretty special. We've closed the chapter on a phase of term limits, the old term limit system from 1992 to 2002, 30 years. I can't verify this one with certainty, but going as best as I can with records and memory, the representatives in that area from my district have not missed votes, absent a very major surgery for one of my predecessors. Did not miss votes. Every member from my district, now this is certain, during that 30 years, they, were ser they served the maximum time under term limits. They were termed out. Every single one of them returned to the district. Every single one of them still living in that era still lives in the district. Over 30 years, that's, that's the place from which I come. Lydia. Long nights, long weekends, but not together oftentimes. You and the kids, Devlin, the dude, Katie. It wasn't the parenting experience that we expected. And it certainly wasn't the career that you signed up for, even though you started with me way, way early. <laughs> Insecure years, building a name meant always saying yes seemingly to everything except for the question, will you be home? I think we went seven years without a Saturday that was free. And then I'm coming to realize even more as I, my, I wrap my time up, I've had people I've talked to that they just tell me, I'm just glad you're getting out. I worry about your safety, things that we don't, may not think about, things that we put our families through. You worried about a lot. I'm sorry about that. And the torturous thing, too, sometimes it's even worse than being away, is when you're home but not present. And that happened, too, a lot. Never more so during COVID, when you're in the home office triaging all those requests and you're home but not present. We took the door off the home office just so that I wouldn't be a barrier between me and the kids. It's been a lot of sacrifice. Keeping with the district tradition I mentioned earlier, I've served the time I was afforded under that era of term limits and can now lay aside the added burden of public service after so long. This job has taken a lot, even as it has given. And it may take a while to find a new footing, but I'm coming home and I love you. I no longer try to explain this job to people with specificity. I don't think it can be done. Just enjoy your time here. Appreciate it. Leaves things better than you found them. Public service can and should be an honorable calling. Make it so. God bless you. Thank you.